Well, my, my opening remarks to the group, you know, when we first started in training camp was, we can feel sorry for ourselves about this and this, and this person's not here, and, you know, we took on more bad contracts. I said, but there's no excuses here. We've got to take a step forward as an organization, as a group. Um, and I felt, I felt we did that. Um, and you could see by the way that we played, and you could especially see it at home. Um, it was remarkable how we kind of took that step and just played uh, and never gave up in our game. So I liked our group. Um, I think there's some pieces that have emerged for us that are exciting. Um, the the Michellis of the world, Clayton Keller's game, you know, Veg Malkus, you know, a lot of really good aspects uh, that kind of jumped out. That Those are pieces that you get excited about as a GM. <laughs> What does the evaluation process look like for now? I know you're doing exit interviews, but yeah. then you dive into it. Like, so yeah. what's the schedule look like in terms of all that? You well, you, 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 you know, in this day and age, you get a lot of player feedback from from the guys that, uh, you know, um, you know, how's the organization behind the scenes? What do you like? What do you don't like? What can we improve? Uh, then you move into the, uh, you know, the coaches' meetings, and we and we start going through the evaluations of the players, the systems. We start working on that. Um, and you know, then you you get to the point where you take that and go to the pro scouts, and you know our pro scouts are out watching some of the players we want to acquire uh, for next year, some of the pieces that we can add in to become better, um, and then that comes down to free agency on that side, just to making the team better, and and also you you get in the mix of the amateur scouting. Bill, the the past two off seasons have been about you know watching this young core grow, yeah. uh, but also acquiring veterans yeah. um, to to shepherd them, and then. Probably be honest, be guys that you're going to flip at the deadline. Yeah. Is this off season going to look any different? Do you see this looking any different in any way? Well, I, I do think it's different in, in some of that way because <laughs> some of the young guys have now become veterans themselves, even though the Kellers of the world are only 24 years old and the Krauses and that. And they've taken a huge leadership role um, on, and I think they've done a great job. And for this year, was probably, it's more by committee. Um, but but that means there's more players in the fight of the leadership, and I like that. Um, they've really uh, done a great job. So I think we still need to add some pieces to bolster who we are. I think we're to become a better team in the off season. I don't think we're to do anything crazy, uh, but there are small pieces that we can add in that will make us a better organization. Okay. Bill, is there anybody this season that surprised you pleasantly? Surprised you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know when we acquired Valimaki off waivers. Um, we had chased him for about two years uh, through some trades and that. And when he came in and play, I was, I was really just liked how every game he got better and better and better and his confidence. And now he's, you know, he was last night, you watch out there, he's one of our best demons. So, you know, those were, those were really good. He was a really good surprise. I think Mat uh, Matias Michelli, he really took a step where, you know, he, you know, he was a little bit more consistent than he was last year. He showed these flashes last year, and, and now he's, he's a more consistent player, and you see them all the time. So there were some small surprises like that that really added into, you know, I guess probably putting a smile on my face at the end of the year. What did you make of the team's fight, especially the second half of the season, um, yeah. and perhaps the, the lack of low expectations from a lot of people at the start yeah. of the season? Um, yeah, it's the fight is really good. You saw it last night, down four one. Nobody's rolling over, and we had a ton of comebacks um, during the course of the year because of our team. They just had that battle inside them where they didn't want to give up, and that's a credit to, to our coaching staff, our culture, and our players not rolling over. And we've we've continued to do that, and uh, uh, the group is you know they've matured, they've taken a step, and I, I think there's some really good pieces there to move forward with. Bill, you're through this season finally, and the exit meetings are done. Is your focus strictly on the draft in your day-to-day -day job starting tomorrow? It, it's a it's a double-headed monster now. Yes, you you have to worry about the draft, uh, but you also hire people to worry about the draft. So you you've got to jump in there and, and kind of you know have some interaction. But you also the other side is driving the the pro scouts and, and, and getting that set up so we can look at acquiring people not only through waivers next year. Uh, but we've got to scout the American League. Is there anybody coming out that that could add into our, our group? And then you've got the games in the in the NHL, the pressure games in the playoffs, where there could be f free agents that can add into our club. We want to see those guys under pressure. So you've got to keep your pro staff alive, along with your amateur amateur staff, and kind of you know have that double focus as you come down the stretch. But make no mistake about it, you know 
it's it's on the amateur side for you know yeah. for the for the most part. Yeah. You also talked about important games and watching playoff games. Did we just talked to your coach who's heading to the World Championships? Yeah. Are you encouraging your players to go get that experience and play important games in the springtime? Um, it is in, in some degree. Like we've we've also sent you know Soderstrom down to the minors, uh, back and some of those guys, the Kelmans of the world, and you know Ivan to go back in net, so they get some pressure. Um, there's a lot of young players on our team that will have that opportunity to go over and play in Worlds, and that's great too because it gets them under that almost playoff pressure. Uh, for our coaching staff, it's great too. I mean, uh, just to have uh, you know Co- Coach Turney head over there and and now kind of further that into some pressure, and he's going to learn some stuff from having some players and become a better coach. So anytime we can do that, uh, as we're going through the rebuild, put our players under that pressure or put our coaches, I think it's a bonus. I know a rebuild takes a, it's a long time, right? It's a process. You need yeah. to have patience, and hopefully, small progress is still progress in yeah. a sense. And how 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 do you feel at the end of the season? Are you optimistic? Are you indifferent? Do you feel like the team has made a lot of strides? Where are you standing with them mentally? I feel very optimistic. I'm I'm, I'm excited about this group moving forward. Um, I didn't think we'd be this far along uh, because we moved a lot of key pieces, like you know the Darcy Kempers of the world, and and. Uh, you know the OELs and the Chickrens, and, and now you look back, and now you're starting to fill them with the Mosers, um, you know, and the and the Val Mackies and the Vegmalkas and that. And so we're we're getting there. We've made some great strides um, in, in finding some good pieces that are young. And this core is is, is at a good age, and they're all kind of in that same age range. And then if we can now add, you know, some of the prospects um, that can come in, um, you never know whether we get somebody high in the draft or it's from last year's draft. There's still some some uh, some pieces that we can add through there. I asked this of your coach too. Do you get a time at all to shut down and reset between now and all the things you have to do? Yeah, it was last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm over. I'm over the rest. Uh, yeah. So I'm really good with that. You know, I was able to open my eyes and get back to work. And I feel great. Yeah, yeah, it was quick. Yeah, uh, not much time. No. <laughs> I'm curious, how challenging is it for you just to ha- maintain that patience throughout a rebuild like this and the process that, that it is? Well, it is. You know, uh, we, we teach a lot through former rebuilds that happened, whether it was the Pittsburgh Penguins or the Chicago Blackhawks or, you know, in, in my days in St. Louis. And, you know, you're kind of amazed by actually how long it does take that process to go through. Um, so you do have to have patience and you have to really dive into the small victories as an organization. Um, you know, and, and whether that victory is in a player that comes along that you didn't expect, um, you know, or it's your, your guy like Clayton Keller and he's starting to achieve and, and really become an elite player. You have to dive into those small victories and just kind of make sure the group is continually moving forward. And, uh, and we've done that this year. Now we've got the, the next challenge next year. You see this team go from 57 points last year, 70 points this year. We've seen rebuilds here before. Yeah, and we've seen when they get more points, and you go, "Oh gosh, we can make the playoffs next right, year." Let's change right. course. Do you still have that commitment for your office and from ownership that no, we're taking our time, we're going to do this the right way? Well, if you look at most rebuilds, they get messed up because they think the rebuild is over, and they see these small flashes from their team, and they get so excited that they do something that they can't reverse, and they then they they're trying to hide that by adding another piece and another piece. And your t- our team and this team here will tell us when they're ready. They'll do it naturally. They'll, they'll evolve to the point where, you know, we'll be at a situation where coming down the stretch and we can add somebody for a playoff run. We'll do that. We, we've got the picks in that. But our team has to show us that we're, we're there. I don't think you go out there and, and kind of force it or, or manufacture it. And, and, and when that happens, then you're trying to hide one mistake by the next mistake by the next mistake and then you can't get it back. And what we want to do is let this happen natural. Let the group dictate where we're going.